would happen. Thank him in faith that it will happen. Because his name is so powerful. At his name, demons flee. At his name, knees bow. At his name, protocol is broken. That is the God that we serve. Can we put our hands together for Jesus one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can come clean. Hallelujah. I had the privilege of meeting mom 2014. And I tell you sincerely, when they say first impression goes a long way, that was my experience. Never met, only read about her. And I came to Dallas for the Pastor's Wives Forum Conference. Ebolua was a baby. And mommy's never met me before. She hugged me, we had a conversation, and I'm thinking, who am I from my small Saskatoon town to be welcomed like this? So it brings me joy today to introduce to you my mom, because that's what I call her. Karen, my daddy's girlfriend, like he said in the morning. <laughs> a woman of faith, a woman of Sincerely, Mom, I, I, I don't have the words. But deep from my heart, I'm so grateful you are here today. And as I bring you up, church, can you help me welcome the wife of our continental overseer for the Americas, Pastor, you can come this way, man. Pastor Manita Fadel. up for Jesus. That clap is too small. We could clap better than that. After we sang, we just heard that song. I think we can do better than that. All power belongs to Jesus. We glorify his holy name. Without him, where will we be? Honestly speaking, where will we be? So we give God all the glory. Another round of applause for our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for the invitation, Pastor Wumi. Appreciate you, Pastor Gideon Oyetuga. Thank you so much. I mean, when they told us we're coming to rest, I was like, okay, that, I've never heard that. Nobody, nobody really invites us and says you're coming to rest. But literally, truly, we have rested. <laughs> it's been about five days, um, and we have rested. Because I don't think, if we were home, we'd probably be everywhere, <laughs> doing everything. But literally, we've come here to rest. So I just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for just you know, inviting us to come and to be a part of Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, we, a lot of people, uh, you know, when they think of the name, they think, oh, wow, that's such a remote place. <laughs> but, you know, I, I love it here. It's actually a nice, quiet city town. Thank you for the invitation. We're so grateful to be here. Um, thank you to our hospitality team. I don't know if Sister... Uh, Bimbala Daramola is here. I took the time to take your name. I don't know if she's here. I've done a wonderful job. Um, our brother, Deacon Johnson Chitanda, Jackson Chitanda. How do I remember that name? Because I used to live in Zambia, so I kind of can get the, you know. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Um, you have your seats, please. Uh, we're all grateful. My husband and I are sincerely grateful to be here. Um, I can't say that I stand here. Um, on my own. I want to thank my husband who's joined me, my pastor, my friend, my boyfriend, my lover, as he would say, the mosquito in my net. <laughs> He's the mosquito in my net. Um, and by his grace, we've been married 30, we'll be 33 years this August. And I don't take that lightly. That is, God has been really, he's been guiding us the whole way. It's not been easy. For God has been there for us, so we give him all of the glory. All the glory belongs to him. So on that note, I, I, my message is a little bit different, and my style is a little bit different. So you're going to have to just take me as I am. <laughs> and my scripture verses are from all over. I don't, my husband is a King James Version man. He's the Jim Jim pastor, as they would say. I am the kind that kind of goes all over. I do New Living Translation message, so please bear with me. I'm just trying to get to the point that I want to make, and um, I do that by just looking at different scripture and different verses in the Bible. So on that note, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day. 
Lord, this is the day you have made, and so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for everyone that is here in your presence right now. Thank you, Lord, because it's not by accident that they're here. I ask, Lord, that as I share my message, that your message will ring clear to them. It's not me speaking, but you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking to them. Father, you know I'm a very simple person. I don't always say things <laughs> the way I think I should say them. But I'm going to allow you to speak through me. And I'm going to allow you to reveal the word that you want me to say to your people this day. We just give you all the glory. We pray, Lord, that as we hear the message, we will learn how to press on in the spirit. Press on in the daily living that we are in this journey, this Christian journey. Father, help us. Give us the grace. Give us the wisdom and give us the understanding. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right. So my text is from Philippians 3, 12 to 14. And now, I'm not going to go NIV. I'm going English Standard Version, okay? I told you I'm going to be all over the place. Um, verse, verse 12, and that is Philippians 3, 12 to 14. If you can get it on the English Standard Version, I don't know. But if you can do NIV, that's fine. I'm going to read my version that I have in front of me. Verse 12 says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. Verse 13 says, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14 says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, we're in a time, as you know, things we never knew would happen, happened. You know, the, of course, the pandemic happened, started in, what, 2019, 20, 2020, sorry. And moving forward, we're two years into it. These are perilous times. I think we should, we should get the writing on the wall. We should see that writing on the wall. That this is not just ordinary times. And many of us would agree that things will never really be the same again. The way we started the pandemic and the way we're going out of it, the way we think and the way we do things is completely different. And we're going to make it through. God will help us all. We've all had our challenges. But I want you to know that it's all well with all of you and your households in Jesus' mighty name. A famous person once said this, when adversity strikes, that's when you have to be the calmest. Take a step back and stay grounded and press on. So by his grace, the message I'm giving you today is called, entitled, Press On. And I know your theme is um, dominion mandate, dominion, but we can learn to press on in this dominion month. And even in the future, as we move forward, we must learn to press on, because that is the journey of the Christian life. That's the Christian journey. We're always pressing on. So what does the word press on mean? It means to move forward, right? To move steadily, to move forcefully in a determined way, despite all that is going on around us, despite all the challenges that are going on around us. It's synonymous with, or in other words, it means or is similar to the words going forward, advancing, pushing forward, pushing through, progressing, and moving ahead. Same words mean the same thing as press on. So here's a picture I'm going to give you. There's a woman in labor. She's in labor. She's on that bed. There are nurses, maybe even midwives around her, trying to coach her to deliver her child, her baby that is not born yet. So the mom keeps pushing. She keeps pushing. She keeps pressing through all the pain, through all the you know, things she might be feeling at that moment. And then, finally, what happens? The baby is born. Hallelujah. The baby is born. So you get the picture, right? Okay. So it's all about persistence, knowing that there's a goal or an end in sight. And you know that nothing is going to stop you. You're going to keep moving. You're going to keep pushing. You're going to keep pushing. You're going to keep pushing. So how do we press on despite the circumstances, and I'm not just talking pandemic now. There's so many issues you may have that you're going through, and God will pull you through those issues and challenges in the mighty name of Jesus. 
They will not be permanent. No condition is permanent is what I say. They will not be permanent in Jesus' name. We're going to look at, we're going to take a step back because we're in this walk as Christians. There are truths that we really need to come to grips with. And we need to understand them if we know how we're going to press on. Number one thing, and I have five things here, is number one thing is you're going to understand that you are loved. You are loved. The Bible says in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, Jeremiah 31 verse 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Wow, what a God. What a God. It doesn't matter what your past may be. It doesn't matter what you're going through or what you've been through. Our God's love is unconditional. Without Christ, like I said in the beginning, where would we be? What would we be doing? Our lives really literally have no meaning unless we put Christ in the center of it all. We have to put him in the center of it all. Romans 5 verse 8. Romans 5 verse 8, the NIV version says, But God demonstrates his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I'm going to step back a little bit, and I'm going to ask if there's anyone in here who has not received Jesus, who does not know Christ as their own Savior, and wants to understand a little bit more about this unconditional love. If you're ready to receive him, you can do so today. If you'd like to know more about him, I'm going to, I'm going to encourage you to please reach out to some of the ministers that are here, even the pastor, Pastor Wumi, who's here. Reach out to them and let them share with you the love of Christ, the unconditional love of our Christ that we, we so hold in high esteem. The number two thing we must realize and the truth we must stand on is that your self-sufficiency is in Christ. Your self-sufficiency is in Christ. It has nothing to do with your own abilities. It's all about him, right? Not about us. It's all about him. It's not about your achievements, okay? Not your job, not your qualifications, not your diplomas, not your degrees, your titles, not your accolades, not even your family or your children. It's not. Our self-sufficiency comes from Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.5 says, not that we're sufficient of ourselves. And I'm giving you the King James Version now. I told you I'm all over the place. <laughs> Um, to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Now, I'm going to go to the Amplified Version, which says, not that we claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency and our qualifications come from God. Let's get that right. Everything that we are is because of him. I don't care what degree you have. I don't care what you think you've achieved. I don't care how much money you have in your, in your bank account. It's not about us. It is, it is Christ. Acts 17 verse 28 says, It is in Christ that we live and move and have our being. It is him. And the sooner we grab that truth, the easier it is for us to understand that we can do nothing except for trust him and be able to press on in the things that might come our way. Um, our life mission should be more than just thinking we've arrived, right? It's wrong, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not, I don't want to say that it's wrong to, to have your degree or to have your title or to do, you know, we, you know, you should do that. But don't make that your God. Do you know what your purpose is? Because many people think they go into the secular work and they have all these degrees but do you really know what God is asking you to do? What is your purpose in life? Is it just that? Some people, some singles think, oh, if I get married, that is my purpose. That's not your purpose. That's a, it's a way to achieve your destiny or get to where God wants you to be, but that should not be your purpose. I like what one of um, uh, female leaders had said here. She says, your purpose is a journey. It's not a destination. Okay, so it's an ongoing thing, okay? Now, back to Philippians 3.12, the, e, the English Standard Version, it says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. The NIV Vision says, Not that I have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ took hold of me. 
In other words, I press on, I stress, I, I, I push, I press forward to achieve God's purpose in my life. So ask your neighbor who's sitting next to you, your purpose is a journey, is your journey and not a destination. Have you discovered it? So ask that question. Have you discovered your purpose? Okay, now I'm coming back, and I want you to understand this point. Ultimately, any way you look at it, this journey of purpose in Christian life must first include spiritual growth and maturity. That's number one. And number two, it must include sharing the gospel of Christ to other people around you. That should be part of your purpose. In fact, it should be the main one, actually. That should be it. So I encourage you to do that. If you haven't been doing that, please work on growing spiritually. I encourage you to share the message of the gospel. Um, we're going to move on. The third point, and we're talking about biblical foundational truths that we really need to understand in order for us to press on. The third thing is that we must understand that we live in a fallen world. Because of the sin of what happened in the Garden of Eden and all that, we know the story. We are in a sinful world, whether we like it or not, realize it or not. And the Bible says what? In that Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? And because all have sinned, we're all going to go through experiences that are not always very pleasant. Some kind of pain, some kind of suffering, some kind of challenge, some kind of fear. But I'm here to tell you that God will help you get through all of those in Jesus' mighty name. You're bigger than that because God is on the throne and he will help you. A lot of us have been experiencing a lot of things as a, as a result of the pandemic. You know, some of us maybe have lost jobs. Some of us may know people that may have passed away. Some may know, um, some may understand or have witnessed where, because of the pandemic, members, family members are together. And then that has caused a lot of issues with marital, you know, abuse, a lot of issues with depression, anxiety, all of that. But I know God is on the throne and God will help us through. 2 Corinthians 4, 8. Now I'm going to a different version. Now we're going to the Passion Translation. Some people don't like that version, but I like some of the interpretations. It says here, though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. At times we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. Quitting is never an option. Psalm 34, verse 19, NIV says, the righteous person may what? Fall down, have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from it all. He delivers them from it all. And the Passion Translation now goes back and says here, even when bad things happen to the good and godly ones, the Lord will save them and not let them be defeated by what they face. Amen. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Let's move on. The fourth thing that will help us to get through um, you know, what we're dealing with in terms of um, pressing on, how we can handle it better. Understand that the challenges we go through make us stronger spiritually. Whether we like it or not, they're coming, right? If you haven't had any, just live a little longer and it will show up. That's what they say. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17 says, this is why we never give up. This is New Living Translation now. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. This is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubled, our struggles are small and won't last very long. What we call light afflictions, which I think the King James Version mentions, light afflictions. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them that will last forever. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to share this story. And it's a personal one. In February, I want to say 2021, right, honey? I think it was 2021. I don't know if you heard about the, the severe drop in weather. Well, for you guys, it's a drop in the bucket. But our temperatures fell below freezing. In, and then in Dallas, that's a big deal. Okay, no one has had experienced that in over 100 years. So this, it was actually, I even remember the date, February 15th. <laughs> The temperatures dropped way below freezing. And of course, the infrastructure of many of the homes and apartments and all of that are not built for that. So a lot of homes experienced uh, either flooding because a lot of the pipes that are in the ceilings, like for instance, sprinkler system pipes is in the ceilings um, or even in the walls, they all burst, they burst. 
and a lot of people experience flooding in all of their homes. Not all homes, I should say some homes. And, well, unfortunately, I don't know if that's unfortunate for us, but God, God rectified everything. So in our home, it happened. And basically, the sprinkler system in my office, <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, my office? <laughs> so the, the sprinkler system in my office burst, and water was just like rivers of water, just through the whole, started in my, in my house, in my office, and then it spread all the way through the kitchen, all the way through the living room. It just, it just pretty much damaged a lot, of, and we had wood floors, okay? So it damaged just about everything. But I want to hear, I'm here to tell you that God worked everything out. That might be a light affliction. That might be, I don't know what your light affliction is. I don't know what your challenge is. But God has a way of working all of that out. Do you know, yes, we were misplaced for about six to eight weeks from our home. We didn't see our home. We didn't, we didn't, we couldn't access anything that was in our home. We were in a hotel that was about 30 minutes away. And yes, that was quite disrupting. But I can't, I can't tell you, our house is brand new right now. Our house looks totally refurnished, refurbished. I mean, we ended up doing a lot more that extended beyond, you know, what happened. But because we couldn't mismatch everything, so we had to do everything. But we thank God. Insurance paid for it. That's how God works. So I don't know what your light affliction is. You know what that is. And God can bring you through. Okay? We press on. We move on. We don't look at the things that are going on around us. Because that was really upsetting for us. You know, he, has, he needs to have his books. I need to be able to prepare things. I need to be able to get... Th we couldn't do that for eight weeks. Those are temporary light of fictions. That's what we're talking about. All right. Let's move on. The fifth one. I understand that we are to press on despite it all. Okay? We're to press on despite everything. And there are three ways that we're going to press on. The first one is in the physical challenges you may have. Now, what health challenge are you facing? It could be some physical problem with your body, but being a physician that was in practice for a good 10, 11 years, I'm always all about health. What are you facing right now? Is it a medical concern? Are you struggling with diabetes, hypertension? Have you had a history of a stroke? All those things, we tend to think they're not important, but those are areas that God also wants us to prosper and be in good health. You know that the scripture says so. So let's try and also consider that we press on in those areas, improve ourselves, let's get better, let's um, move to a higher level of good health. We're also talking about mental health. We don't like talking about it in church, I know, but it's true. We get depressed, yes, and we get anxious, yes. <laughs> it's so true. What have you done about it? I think the first thing we need to realize is that it is, acknowledge that it is a problem, that's the hardest thing, I think, particularly for our environment. Many Africans, you know, do not want to talk about it. Even, well, I should even say, even the average American doesn't really want to talk about it, but there are a lot of resources. And I think we choose to ignore it, but we must realize that it is a reality. We must face it, press on in those areas. That's half the battle, recognizing it. And God will help you as you help yourself. First, realize you have an issue and attack it head on. When it seems tough, press on and get help. Get the help you need. Don't shy away from it. Don't shy away from it. Trust God in everything. Yes, they're doctors. They don't know everything, but God has given them wisdom to be able to do what they do. So allow them to be able to help you. Take what you can to allow them to help you, and you'll be the better for it in Jesus' mighty name. How else are we going to press on? I said three areas. I said physical challenge is one. The second one is faith and action towards others because that is what God expects us to do while we're here on this earth. He expects us to be able to show love. We just talked, heard about that in the last um, service as well. We heard that also in the message um, this morning that we need to show our love, that faith in action towards other people. They're looking at us. And what example are we? We have to be a better example. Show that love that God wants us to, to be to those who do not know him. So press on in faith and action towards others. The third one is press on in your spiritual Christian walk. Because we must strive to get the prize of the upward call of God, which we will receive in heaven in Jesus' name. 
But we have to be able to make that walk, walk that walk as he wants us to, to, to do. Verse 13 and 14 of our text says, But one thing I forget that lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on towards the goal. A writer once said, you don't have to have it all figured out, right, to press on. You don't. Just take the next step, right? Take a step of faith. Take the next step of faith. That's how you press on. Take one step at a time. It's like a baby walk taking, taking you know, baby or, or a toddler trying to know how to walk. Take one step. He's, you know, kind of shaky. Take another step. Still shaky. Taking another step. Still shaky. But at some point, you get it and you go, right? You're going to do that. That's what God expects us to do. That, to do. Take a step of faith and press on. Proverbs 4.25 English Standard Version says, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. When you're looking straight before you, you're not looking at what is happening to your left or to your right, right? You're looking straight ahead. And that's what God wants us to do. Let your eyes look directly on where you're going. Obviously, Christ will be there by your side and you're moving straight ahead. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. So the five things I mentioned, you are loved. So we're going to press on, but we need to press on. We need to know, understand three or five fundamental truths. And that is one, you are loved. Two, our self-sufficiency is in Christ. Three, we live in a fallen world. Four, challenges make us stronger spiritually. I give you the example of what happened in our home. And that really, that really, I mean, the whole, the whole thing opened up my eyes to see that, yes, we truly only have God. I mean, really, we could have been displaced from that house completely. Because some people never went back to their homes. There were some that never went back. We went back. You know, so we thank God. It's made us stronger spiritually. We press on despite it all. Those are the five things. You are loved. Self-sufficiency in Christ. We live in a fallen world. Challenges make us stronger spiritually, and we must press on despite it all. Now, Having gone through all of those, I have a few more things we're going to mention here. And that is because, you know, we live in the day-to-day -day world. And I'm the kind of person that if you can't explain to me how I'm going to live my life, you've given us the truth, but how am I going to live my life every single day? How am I going to walk the walk, they say, as a Christian? What are the things I'm supposed to be doing? How can we practicalize it? I'm all about practicalization. So here are some things I think we can take home. Number one, know who you are in Christ by speaking daily affirmations to yourself. Okay, 1 Peter 2.9, NIV says, but you're a chosen people, right? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may de declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. So how do you do it? Like I said, you're going to speak daily affirmations or positive confessions. There's some that I really like. And one of my favorite is, um, is Psalm 16, verse 8, which says, I keep my eyes always before on the Lord, and with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Okay? What we say to ourselves really goes a very, very long way. That Proverbs 18.21 says, what death and life are in the power of the tongue, right? It's so true. What you say to yourself actually does come to, come to pass, okay? The Message Bible of this 18, Proverbs 18.21 says, words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. So it's all in your power. Every day that you live, Rather than complaining about the circumstance, rather than complain, choose to say things that are positive about your circumstance, and God will help you. He will encourage you as you get through that concern. Okay. Psalm 27 verse 1 says, and it's another one that I like, the Lord is my light and my salvation, right? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, many of us go through fearful things, but we are not about fear, right? We have the power of the Lord with us. So confessing scripture, 
saying things like, I am the head and not the tail, I'm above and not beneath. I mean, saying things like that all help us to move in the direction that we need to be in as we press, press on. Okay, how can we press on in our daily living? What other way? Have an attitude of gratitude. I said it earlier, it's easy to complain, and I'm number one culprit. You might think, oh, you have everything. No, <laughs> you know everything. No, I don't. Um, and my husband usually has to pull me in and say, wait, 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 wait. Stop complaining. <laughs> Stop complaining. What has God done for you? And I would list everything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> have an attitude of gratitude, okay? God has been faithful. Even though the things that we've gone through, think of the things that God has brought you through, right? My daughter got an, uh, what do you call this, uh, a gratitude journal for her graduation gift. And a lot of people don't pay attention to it, but I saw it and I was like, we really need to pay attention to things like that. Start writing things down, listing all the things that God has really been good to you for. What has he done in your life? Very, very important. We should be thankful that you know Christ, right? That you woke up this morning. You have a roof over your head. Like I said, many people during that flood, they did not even go back to their home. He kept your marriage, right? He's protected your children. You've remained healthy. He's kept you alive, even with COVID. Who knows how maybe you were exposed and you never got ill. But for the grace of God. You have a job. You're not destitute. You have a roof over your head. You're breathing every day. Okay. But for the grace of God, we must be thankful. Another way we can press on, we must remain prayer focused. Prayer focused, right? James 5 16, the effectual reverent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And that's King James Version. I couldn't change that anyway, but getting to any other, any other version is just right where it is. New Living Translation of that same James 5 verse 16 says, The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Okay. Luke 11, 9. And I'm going to go to the Passion Translation. It says, So it is with your, so it is with your prayers. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll discover. Knock on heaven's door and it will one day open for you. Every persistent person will receive what he asks for. Every persistent seeker will discover what he needs. And everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Remain prayer focused through that issue, that challenge as you're pressing on. God will see you through. Remain persistent. God always answers prayer. Stay persistent, and God will help us. Number four, have a friend or a mentor. And it's sometimes, especially those of us who are in leadership, the higher up we go, it's really hard to say we have friends. <laughs> um, and I know Pastor Wumi can identify. <laughs> we can identify. The higher up you go, you might be thinking, oh, they're okay. They're fine spiritually. We need friends. We need mentors. We need people that can come beside us and say, Oh, this is what you're going through, I can identify. Oh, this is what you need to do. This is what we need to be doing. Or even pray together. So whether you have a sister friend, a brother friend, a relative, a teacher, a pastor, a system pastor, a minister, whatever, reach out to those people during the times that you're going through. Don't think you can do it alone. And that's what, unfortunately, makes us head into the areas of depression, anxiety, which does not have to happen. Um, we don't have to go that route. But there are people in your space that maybe you have not given or allowed in, and you have to find that person. Prayerfully find that person and start talking to them, relating with them. You'll be surprised how much they can actually share your burden. And that's what it's all about, sharing that burden. People, you must have people with you in those times of need. All right. Proverbs, Proverbs 17, 17 says, Well, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. And um, the interpretation from Passion says, A dear friend will love you no matter what, and a family sticks together through all kinds of trouble. Okay, final way we can press on in our daily living. 
is going back to the things that we're passionate about. Is it writing? Is it um, taking pictures? Is it things that maybe ladies in the house, if you're into cooking, you're sewing, whatever it is, those kind of passions. Men, if it's something that you've dropped maybe years ago, <laughs> I know for Pastor Judy, it's probably soccer, right? <laughs> It's still soccer. So you find what it is. Go back. You know, sometimes we get so, so um, just we, we're blinded by what we're in that we forget there are other things that God has given you, that's blessed you, other passions. Branch out. Find out a way you can use that passion to help other people who are going through difficult situations. And that will ease that, you know, circumstance that maybe you're feeling is clouding your vision. You will not have clouded vision in Jesus' name. But I'm saying these are things we can do that will help us, practical things that will help us. Volunteering, working out, gardening, sports activities, all of them. Just think of it, pray about it, use it, reach out to others, use it as a way of reaching out to others and bringing others to Christ. And God will help you as you do that in Jesus' name. So recap, five things that we can do, practical things. Know that you are in Christ. And by knowing you are in Christ... Nothing but positive affirmation will come out of your mouth by God's grace. Have an attitude of gratitude. Have a journal, maybe, if that works for you. Use your phone if you have to. Remain prayer-focused. Have a friend or a mentor, someone who's there, who can help you get through the difficult situations. Find your passion and use it to win others to Christ. Bring others to church. All of these things... They might think, you might think they're minor, they're not. God wants to use you, and he wants to use you mightily so that you can press on, bring others to Christ. But you, as you're bringing others to Christ, we're pressing on in the faith. And your challenge will become much, much smaller as you do that in Jesus' name. With God on your side, with God on your side, with God on your side, it's not an impossibility. You will get through. You will press on. You will press on. You will move forward. You will push forward. You will get to the prize in Jesus' mighty name. And that will be your portion. That really ends my message. We're going to pray. I hope you were blessed. Um, shall we pray? Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for loving us. Thank you for your love. Without, without it, Lord, where would we be? Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for everything that we are is because of you. As we live in this world, Almighty Father, we ask that you help us to run the race, the Christian race, the Christian journey. Please give us the grace to handle problems and challenges by pressing on, by pushing forward, by moving deliberately and knowing that you are there with us. We're going to move on. We're going to press on despite it all in Jesus' name. As we press on, may we remain courageous. May we remain persistent. May we see the positive and practicalize it in our daily life so that people can see that, yes, we're going through issues, but they can see your glory. They can see your light. Help us in Jesus' name. In the end, let it be said of us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so shall it be. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. You see, my wife is so calm, collected me. I will have run three miles, run here, run there. The same message. Shall we all rise in Jesus' name? I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights are gained. every day. Still praying us, I want what bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up.
is not born again. My wife just said word of affirmation. Put that Joel 2 26 in the original, original King James Version. I don't like passion or new living or just the original one. Amen. And the original people are the one going to heaven anyways, right? Shout hallelujah. Joel 2 26. Joel 2 26. Put it on the screen. And you are going to personalize it. Joel, Joel 2.26. Joel 2.26. Is it my accent or what? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we read it? Joel 2.26. And I will eat in plenty. No, I'm the one talking now. I will eat in plenty. And I shall be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord my God. Who has dealt wondrously with me, and I shall never be ashamed. Now say it one more time. Say it. You are saying it to yourself now. You are home. This is the word of affirmation my wife talked about. So when you wake up in the morning, God, God, what are you telling me? Just open. Oh, this one God is telling James Fadell, and I shall eat in plenty, and I shall be satisfied, and I will praise the name of the Lord my God. And he will do wonders in my family. And I will never, 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 never be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. I stand on this altar in the name that's above every other name. As we are spoken, so it shall be. You will eat in plenty. I say you will eat in plenty. You will be satisfied. In the name of the Lord. The Lord will do wonders in your life. You will never be put to shame. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf will not wither. Everything and anything you lay your hand upon will prosper. In the name of Jesus. It was said of Jesus that he was hungry. And he saw a tree with leaves thinking there is food therein. And he went there. And there was just leaves, no fruit. And Jesus answered, no man eat of this tree here and herein after. And disciples had it. I decree and I declare. Trees that they are bearing sour fruits. They shall be uprooted. Your amen is not born again. I said every tree in your life. That they are bearing sour fruit. They shall be uprooted. Every tree of affliction. Every tree of sorrow. Every tree of crying. In your garden. They shall wither in the name of Jesus. And then she shall wither in the name of Jesus. Every tree of stagnancy, every tree of failure, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, they shall be burnt to ashes. In the name of Jesus, you will serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water. He will bless your bread. In the name of Jesus, none shall be barren in the land. And the number of your days you will fulfill. So I decree, so I declare. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let me look at you neighbor says, I say, I see you eat in plenty. No, no, no. Fine, look at them. See, you will eat in plenty. In the name of Jesus, you will be satisfied. God will do wonders in your life. You will never, 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 never be put to shame. So I decree, so I declare. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. You are Alpha.
magnify you. We exalt you above the heavens. You are good and your mercy is forever. Thank you for today. Thank you for this service. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for telling us to press on. Thank you for anointing our head with fresh oil. Thank you for quickening your word in our spirit. Thank you for the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you've gone ahead of us into this new week. Thank you because mountains are flattened. Thank you because rivers in our way, you've given us a boat to cross over. We thank you for the ones you will dry up. We thank you for the lands that will rise up to meet us. We give you glory for dust that you've removed. Thank you, Jesus. We walk in dominion because we were made in your image and we are your children and we will shine in the darkness of this world. Thank you for our daddy and our mommy that you brought our way. Thank you for the word of grace and power that you've ministered to us through them. Thank you for granting them safe journey here and we know you will take them back home safely. Thank you Jehovah Nissi for what you're doing in the redeemed Christian Church of God in the Americas. Thank you for the continental overseer and his wife. Thank you for their families. Thank you for their children. Thank you for everything that concerns them because you're watching over them. Thank you because they are able to come and we don't have any bad news to share with them. Thank you that we've received them and they don't have any bad news to share with us because you, our God, has been faithful. We give all the glory, honor, and adoration unto your name. As they've watered us today, Lord, we are asking that you water them back in return. As they've given out of, you know, everything, of the virtue of everything, Lord, we pray that you, we pray that you replenish their energy, both physically and spiritually in the name of Jesus. As you've made them our leaders, we're looking up to them. We pray that they will finish well. That on the day of reckoning, oh God, when they stand before you, oh God, the report will be welcome, oh faithful servant, in the name of Jesus. We frustrate every plan of the enemy over their life. We frustrate every plan of the enemy over RCCG, the Americas. We frustrate every attack, every evil arrow. We say back to sender in the name of Jesus. In their time as our leaders, there will be no sorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no loss of life in the mighty name of Jesus. Progress will be their portion in the name of Jesus. Not just in spiritual things, but in their own personal life in the mighty name of Jesus. Their children will bring them joy. Their children will bring you joy, Lord God Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We pray that your blood will answer whenever any other voice speaks concerning them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this new week as we all go. We pray that the week is blessed because you are with us. Thank you because you've done this and many more. We give you all the glory, honor, and adoration. For in Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Can we share the grace and fellowship? And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. For those that have watched online, thank you for fellowshipping with us today. God bless you all. So, okay. Yeah. So our senior pastors, please.